Good. Maybe we should uh, get an example. Okay, so uh, let's say that over here, Say we have the reactions uh, that are involving copper two plus and solid copper and zinc and zinc two plus. And let's try to figure out what's going on in each of these cells. You guys have your textbooks with you? Mm -hmm. So what we want to find is this master table, which you might have already had some practice mm -hmm. using here. So let's see if I can find that page. Is that in the lab manual? Good. Yeah, we have that in our lab manual, but this is the, for the book properties, it was all this. So let's see if we can find the half reactions that these represent here in that table. Now you got to be very careful here because you got to get the right elements and the right charges. I notice there's a bunch of rows here for copper, but there's only one row that's got copper two plus and neutral copper. That has a potential of 0 0.34 volts. All right, and now let's find the row, row for zinc. And that's got the correct charges in it as well. Good. What's the potential for that reaction? on that 0.76? Right. Potentials are in volts. What type of reaction is this written as? A reduction or an oxidation? Uh, redu reduction. How can you tell? Because it's losing the electrons. On the copper. It's going to gain electrons. <laughs> oh no, wait. So does this half reaction represent an oxidation or a reduction? Ox wait, a re wait, a reduction. Ox wait, it's a reduction. Wait, yes, it is reduction because it is losing the oxidation states. No. Yeah, although there should be a simpler way to, to think about that. Is this, it does, are we showing here, a, is this half reaction represent gaining electrons or losing electrons? Are the, is the start, pardon? Gaining? Yeah. That one's gaining, yeah. Yeah, here the copper is gaining electrons. Um, and we know GER, gain of electrons, is reduction. So this must be a reduction. How about this half reaction? The way this half reaction was written in the book, does it represent an oxidation or a reduction? It's still a reduction. Yeah, because it also represents a gain of electrons. In fact, if you look at that table, every single reaction is a reduction, right? Basically, if the electrons are starting materials, they're being gained. So that represents a reduction. If the electrons are on the right-hand side as products, that would represent electrons that have been lost. So that would be an oxidation. Well, the conventional way to write the tables is to write everything as a reduction. Why, why do they write everything as a reduction? What if you wanted to know about the oxidations? Well, that's no trouble. We could always just flip the equation to see what it would look like as an oxidation. So they, they, uh, it would be a waste of paper to have a separate piece of paper with all the oxidation half-reactions. They would just be the reverse of the reduction half-reactions. All right, so does this represent an oxidation potential or a reduction potential? Reduction potential. 
Be how do we know? Because it was given to us next to a reduction half reaction. Um, but I'm going to emphasize that, I think, by putting R-E-D in front of these to emphasize that these are reduction potentials. It's pretty standard in chemistry a lot of time to only talk about reduction potentials and maybe never to talk about oxidation potentials. If you're just given a potential, it's usually a reduction potential. But the way we know these are reductions is they're next to reduction half reactions. All right. Um, now, um, so what does this number here represent? Which of these half reactions is more favored? Which of these half reactions is more favored? The zinc. The um, yeah, how can we tell which of these half reactions is more favored? The way it's written? Oh, wait. Sorry. Oh, wait. No, we left sorry. the negative. Yeah, sorry. I didn't see the negative. Uh, it's the copper. Because it's further to the right on the number line. We've already talked about how positive potentials indicate a favorable reaction. That's also true for the potentials for half reactions. The more positive the potential is, either for the full reaction or for the half reaction, the more favored it is. So this is the positive potential that's further to the right on the number line. So this is the more favored reduction. And the zinc here is further to the left on the number line. So this is the less favored reduction. So who wants to be reduced more, copper ions or zinc ions? Yeah, we just said that the copper wants to be reduced more. Who wants to be oxidized more, copper metal or zinc metal? Zinc metal. That's just the reverse of the previous case. If this wants to be reduced more, this must have to be, want to be oxidized more. But we can prove that um, by writing down the oxidation potentials. The oxidation, so what's the oxidation potential for this reaction? Uh, negative uh, 0.34. Yeah, and the oxidation potential for this reaction would be positive 0.76. That's why they don't have to give you the oxidation potentials. The oxidation potential is always the negative of the reduction potential. So you can always figure out the oxidation potential if you need it. So the very fact that we know that this has the, uh, the biggest reduction potential tells us that it would have the smallest oxidation potential. Um, so that's how we can kind of tell who wants to be oxidized more and who wants to be reduced. All right, so now in this galvanic cell, um, are we setting up the reactions that want to happen or are we forcing the reactions to happen? So we need to put things where they want to be. So who <laughs> wants to go, what reaction wants to go at the cathode here? The copper? Because it wants to. Yeah, we just said this is the reduction that wants to happen. So over here, uh, we'll say that the half reaction here is the copper 2 plus, plus the two electrons forming the copper metal. And that's a reduction potential of positive. 0.34 volts. Good. Where is the copper 2 plus in, the, in this actual laboratory equipment? Yeah, because since it's an ion, it must be dissolved. So I could say that we have some copper 2 plus. You could say that that's AQ, dissolved in that aqueous solution. And where's the metal copper? That's what the electrode here would be made out of. This is the solid copper metal. So we can make our, our electrode here out of the solid copper metal. So what's happening here, now we can see what's happening. Um, these electrons are moving into this position, um, which uh, attracts these copper two pluses over, because they obviously want to gain electrons. And after they've gained the electrons, they turn into solid copper, and they plate onto the electrode instead of just continuing to float around in the solution. All right, so now we can say what's happening over here. So what's the half reaction that's happening at our anode? Um, the zinc solid <clears throat> turning into the zinc ion with two of I can't just write down this reaction because this is for reduction. We actually have happening here is oxidation, so I have to reverse this. So, what's the potential for this half reaction? Um, 0.76. Positive or negative? Positive. That's right. The reduction potential was negative, but here we're writing an oxidation potential. And to remind myself of that, I'm going to put OX here to remind myself this is an oxidation potential. We already knew that the reduction potential was negative but the oxidation potential is positive. To me, it makes more sense to write an oxidation potential here, because that's what's happening here, oxidation. 
All right, so uh, where is the zinc 2 plus? That's in the solution. And where's the solid zinc? That could be what our electrode is made out of. So what's happening over here is that the solid zinc is spontaneously losing electrons and dumping them into the wire. And after an atom of zinc loses its electrons, it turns into zinc 2 plus and it floats off into the solution. 